Greetings, YouTubers. It is uh, Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. <laughs> Sorry, I had to stop. Even though I've got it written down right here in front of me, I still wanted to think about it because even even when I have it here, I'll, I'll still come up with the wrong date or just have no clue. Those of you that know me know that <laughs> it's, it's my failing. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's all good. So, so uh, uh, I got my outline here. First off, um, it's been a while since I've uh, posted a video, so this is probably gonna be a long one because I feel like I've got some ground to cover. Um, so, uh, first off, welcome to my 300th video. Um, there's been, you know, some some. I use the word mutation because it sounds cool <laughs> of the list of videos on my channel um, there were you know days I think last year when I first got here I was doing these live uh, video chats Moonbat coffee chat that's what I called it and um, and had some great friends that showed up every morning just just sit with me and drink coffee and and talk nonsense and um, and it was good. Um, and, we, you know, because of where I am, you know, I'd have troubles with the network. It, it collapsed on me, so I dropped a video, and I'd have to restart it. And so there'd be, like, you know, video 195A and 195B and 195C because I'd have to restart things and and, um, and come back online and... And um, so there were some accounts that YouTube was posting that weren't really reflective of how many videos I've actually done in terms of complete, discrete, um, you know, videos, even though they might have been broken into three segments because of some technical failure, that kind of thing. And, um, and some of the stuff I've deleted, um, like the live videos... I told you I was going to take those down, and I and I have. Um, you know, I didn't think there. You know, there was nothing bad about them. Nothing. I didn't. I liked them just fine. I, and in fact, I had fun. They were great. And they're, th you know, it's something I would think about doing again. I guess. Um, and may I? I don't know. But I felt like they weren't really representative of of uh, the goals of the channel. I guess to some extent, they were long. I mean, some of them were like an hour and a half. They were just long, and um, and in terms of finding, you know, like topical information, uh, there are times when I'm um, talking with someone, and you know, I'll say, ah, oh, you know, I, I've got a video on that, <laughs> and then I got to go find it, and I had to wade through, you know, a lot of material to try and remember where this video was, and um, and the live ones kind of got in the way of that, and anyway, so. It had nothing to do with any of the content or any of the chats or... We had some people, there were some trolls that came in. Uh, I don't know where they were from, but, you know, they were clearly not from uh, traditionally English-speaking households. Because it's just the English was really broken and everything. And, uh, there were a couple of them that were kind of interesting. They appeared to be young, young folks, um, you know, like young adults, you know, 21... 21, 25 kind of rain, something like that. And it was it was just kind of cool to get their perspectives on things. So there was good content and everything. It's just, I don't know. I felt like they, they seemed out of place. So anyway, I've removed them. And um, and the last thing I want is for anybody to think, well, I, I you know, I took them down because of something that was sad or something inappropriate. And that, and that has an, absolutely nothing to do with it. So it's just they didn't feel like they fit. They seemed incongruent. So I, I took them down. But today... Today, yes, right here today, live, not live, recorded, um, is the 300th video. So, um, I, had, I had grand visions, you know, of getting like a, what was that movie about the about Spartacus, Spart Sparta, uh, and um, you know the famous battle. Uh, was it the Persians and the Spartans? And uh, 300 Spartans held off. Tens of thousands of Persians at this uh, 
this very strategic point in the topography. And of course, there was a movie about it, and the guy's got you know his helmet on and just blood everywhere, and his sword in his hand. Oh, I thought about doing something like that. And I thought, yeah, it sounds like too much work, <laughs> but it would have been funny. So uh, anyway, three hundred vids, awesome. Okay, uh, the topic that's on everybody's mind: COVID nineteen. Oh my goodness, what a what um, what interesting times we live in. I think this is. This is going to change, I think, life the way we have lived it going forward. Um, it's going to have some ramifications. I don't, I, how can it not? You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, some of it is, um, it is, some of it is good stuff. Some of it is not so good. You know, a lot of finger pointing and blame, and they should have done this and they should have done that. Um, the really tragic stuff, though, is the stuff that's just flat out lies that people are putting out there just to stir up fear and um, and um, you know that kind of stuff is really unfortunate that somebody would take advantage of it. And the other thing I saw was uh, some price gouging. Um, not, not as much uh, today as far as I can tell. Uh, the exa here's the example that I ran into. So I've got these blue, uh, they're Aquatainers from Reliant I think they are. Available at Walmart for like, uh, I don't know, 15 bucks, give or take a couple of dollars, depending on where you are in the country. And uh, they're great containers. I love them. They've got a little spigot, and uh, they hold seven gallons. And, um, you know, they're a perfect shape for me, and they fit in some of the cubby holes I've got here in my rig. And and um, and I love them. They're great. They're great. But um, the disadvantage of them is is that they're um, the plastic is not UV tolerant. So, and, you know, I live outdoors for the most part. I mean, I've got a trailer here where I'm sitting in right now, and I sleep here. But for the most part, I, I'm outside. I'm out enjoying nature and hiking and taking pictures, and, and I live outdoors. And, uh, you know, I cook outdoors, and my water, my water's outdoors. So over the course of about eight months or so, give or take, uh, the plastic will start to degrade and crack. I actually had one uh, as a different manufacturer, a five-gallon jug, and I filled it up with water, and I was hauling it back to my car, and the handles just pulled off because the, the plastic had become so brittle because of ultraviolet, and um, and um, you know these Reliant um, bottles are are susceptible to UV light as well. The um, the availability of them became like zero. I was I was at Walmart in Parker. I don't know, over the course. Yeah, I know. I still shop at Walmart. You know, it's gotten better since the peak season. The crowds have dissipated. And with the COVID thing, it's like, you know, you go, <coughs> and, the, and the aisle will empty. <laughs> you can get to anything you want. Don't tell anybody I told you that. I think there are people who went to jail for that. I'm just kidding. Any local constabulary out there watching my video. I didn't really do that. Um, and so, anyway, I couldn't get them at Walmart. They weren't available anywhere that I could find them. So I, I went to Amazon, and I looked on Amazon to find them. 36 bucks for those water jugs. I started, okay, as well, I'm not going to spend that much. I'll look for some others. I found some for 150 <laughs> Oh, I was, was like, okay. So clearly people were starting to, you know, uh, get water and keep it makes perfect sense. That's what I was doing. I was looking to get some water and keep it so that I could, you know, continue living the way that I do. And, um, and the price was like threefold what it would normally be. So I just, um, you know, I, I, I put it in my, you know, my wish list that I keep on Amazon and, um, um, and waited. I figured I'd just make do with what I had. And, um, over time, it came back down, and I, I think it hit about fourteen ninety-five, I think, a piece. So I bought two of them, and they're on their way, and they should be here Friday. So, um, so the the price gouging thing—that's that's my example of price gouging, and I've seen it in a couple other places. Gas prices—is that awesome or what? I mean, I've seen dollar uh, seventy-nine up in Parker at uh, the Running Man, dollar eighty-nine, still kind of high here in. Um, in quartzite, um, 
219, which is still, you know, comparatively cheap compared to some other places. Uh, but still, it's not, you know, what, why is it so high here? And then I saw in the news uh, yesterday, for the first time in history, oil fell below zero. So <laughs> my question was, so are people going to pay me to fill my gas tank now? <laughs> One can only hope, right? So anyway, um, so the one thing that's true about um, about COVID is that there's all kinds of information out there. Some of it is accurate. Some of it is not. There's disparity between data that I've seen, um, which I found confusing. And I mean, I get it. You know, some people have data from a certain point in time, different models and different ways of analyzing that data and looking at it. But I think if you're going to go so far as to publish and put it out there, especially, you know, in the climate now, I mean, people are scared and, um, and they're doing all kinds of wacky things they normally wouldn't do, you know, to try and stay safe and keep their family safe and that kind of stuff. And you've got this information that's coming at you that's not completely accurate. And I think if we learn anything from this particular event is that um, if you're going to put something out there, make sure that it's accurate. Make sure that it's representative of what's really going on. And, um, and those of you who do it just to promote fear and, um, and gouge and make profit, uh, shame on you. <laughs> shame on you. Don't, don't do that. Uh, you know, this, whatever you, complaints you want to make about this world, and I have my, my own set. And I do make complaints about this world. I mean, anybody who's listened to me recently knows about my my Walmart woes. Um, but at the end of the day, I love life, and I I I, uh, I care about people. And um, in spite of the fact that I like to camp away from them, I still care about people. I care about my kids and my and my family and all of those things. And and to see somebody just either because they think it's fun or they want to make some money or whatever. I don't know what their motivations might be um, to disseminate misinformation for the sole purpose of scaring people or making profit. I think that's just just bad. Shame on you. That's my two cents. So I'm still on La Posa South. Um, nearest neighbor is about a quarter mile away. And um, the place is empty. I mean, there are a few people here. There's been some kind of confusion about camping here. I'm going to go ahead and add this to the list and talk about La Posa South and camping here in BLM land and, um, and what I've discovered. Um, so typically here in La Posa South and, and um, other LTVAs managed by the BLM, after the season ends on April 15th, you can then, you could last year get something called an amenities pass. It was uh, 70 bucks last year. 75 was the projected cost this year. Uh, it's really blowing wind out there. I hope that's not affecting my audio. Sorry if it is. Nothing I can do about it. Um, um, 75 bucks this year. Basically, what it allows you to do is use the amenities here at the LTVAs. So here at La Posa South, um, other uh, LTVAs. In proximity with varying levels of amenities available Imperial Dam down by Yuma other places you could go to get water dump trash use the dump stations for emptying your black tanks uh, there were vault toilets that kind of thing and you could camp in these areas back to the old well not old current 14 day limit so you could come here and camp in the LTVA for 14 days Use the amenities if you had the amenities pass, and then you had to move, and, and that's and that's what I understood that process to be like and how how it worked. This year, because of COVID, of course, things are different. Limited staff, uh, limited support infrastructure around the LTVAs. Lots of things have contributed to uh, the BLM's choice to effectively close. The LTVAs. They aren't saying they're closed. They're, in fact, they're saying that they're open. The LTVA is open, but it's at capacity. So it's effectively closed. The um, amenities have been shut off. The water is off the 
well pump is off you can't get water out of those taps and if you could I wouldn't get it out of there because the chlorinators have been turned off which means that the water is probably not as safe as it normally would be and you're risking you know getting contaminated water so uh, the trash bins are going to be gone I think as of today they closed them off yesterday and I think they're probably going to be picking them up today or tomorrow and they'll be gone the vault toilets are locked uh, the dump stations are barricaded off you can't get to them so the LTVA is effectively closed so anyway I was getting kind of confused mixed signals um, about you know okay well can I stay here should I move you know you've got this this COVID thing that's you know prompting people myself included to just hunker down and stay put you know stay home stay safe <laughs> I don't have a home I'm effectively homeless well I don't think of myself as homeless this is my house I love my house this is my home and I love it but I, I don't have you know a traditional home address like most people do I can't just you know go into a house and stay there I've got to be somewhere and uh, and I can move and in fact I was getting ready to do just that but I called uh, I called the BLM headquarters in Yuma and said so you know I'm getting kind of mixed answers and stuff I'm just thought I'd go straight to the source and say you know what what up you know what do I do can I you know there was amenities pass last year what's what's going on this year and uh, basically the answer to me was there are no amenity passes uh, they were going to issue them they were going to be 75 bucks but there were no amenities so I guess it you know kind of didn't make sense to have amenities passes that didn't really give you amenities so they stopped that and I said well what about you know the 14 day thing can I can I camp here for 14 days and they said well technically you're not supposed to be there but if you're already there just stay put don't move nobody's gonna take it yet um, but um, you know no new people can come in because we just don't have the support infrastructure to keep it I don't know why it makes any difference here than it would somewhere else out in the desert but that's the answer that I got and so I am still here in La Posa South in Quartzite South of Quartzite and um, I have some shipments coming my water jugs <laughs> uh, and they're gonna be here Friday um, along with some other stuff I got a blood pressure cough is it I most most of you know I think you know I have high blood pressure um, I'm gonna tell you another story so I, this is gonna be a long video sorry I may hit 45 minutes on this guy I don't know um, a couple years back um, you know I was a um, I was a uh, systems guy <laughs> I don't think I had an official title I don't know what it was but basically I um, I wrote ladder logic and and uh, integrated programmable logic controllers to machines motors and stuff oh my refrigerator just came on um, and um, I had a it was and it was a service guy as well I, I did everything I, I mean I sold them I built them I tested them I trained uh, customers on how to use the equipment that I was building and um, and also I would travel to different places to go fix them if they broke and that kind of stuff and there was a local customer and I was out uh, you know working on their system they had a, a PLC go down so I it was late in the day and I got all that finished and I was heading home and um, there was this train track that kind of crossed the road and it's a rural area no barriers no signs it's just out in the middle of the road but you know that there's a tra rail a trail a uh, trail train tracks Duh. there's train tracks there and uh, so and it was kind of a weird angle so you had to kind of look way back over your shoulder to to uh, to check the track going that direction so you know get the hard one out of the way first and I'm craning my neck around looking and while I did that apparently I let my foot off of the brake of my car and it rolled forward onto the tracks so I'm looking down this way and it's all clear and then I turn this way and here's this big headlight like right there I had milliseconds to react and I threw it in reverse and hit the gas backed off the track but not far enough bottom line is I got hit by a train I used to say you don't have to hit me with a train yeah turns out you do and um, spun my car around all the airbags went off um, I was probably I don't know 60 feet 
knocked back 60 feet from from the, the train tracks and um, pushed the front of my car. I was in a RAV4, a Toyota RAV4, a little, you know, those old cars. And it pushed the front of that car uh, into the cab. The battery was actually inside the passenger compartment. I had battery acid on my pants. and Actually, I still have the Levi's here somewhere. And they've got a hole in them from the battery acid that I threw. So anyway, uh, to make a short story even longer, because this is going to be a long video, um, the EMT, you know, I get on the phone and say, uh, Hi, um, I've just been hit by a train. Yeah, I think I'm okay, but, you know, I want to send somebody out just to make sure. <laughs> I'm like, I'm doing inventory and I'm checking to make sure there wasn't any blood. I'm still breathing and everything. Open the door. The door's still open on that rev door. Open the door to let all the smoke from the airbags that had just gone off inside my cab. And the EMT's down there and he's got the cuff on and he's... And he looks at his dial and he looks up at me. He looks back at his dial and he looks up at me again and he lets the air out and he goes pumps it up again and he looks at the dial and he looks up at me and he goes hey joe you want to come over here for a second so his partner comes over and his partner goes pumps me up and he looks at the dial he looks up at me and he goes uh sir do you have high blood pressure and i said well yeah you know a little bit high. He says, right now it's 250 over 190. i kid you not that's what my blood pressure was 250 over 190. So I said, wow, that sounds pretty high. And he goes, yeah, North, most people are usually dead when <laughs> it gets that high. And they checked it, like, you know, several times just to make sure. So they said, well, you might want to go, go see a doctor about that. And uh, they checked me out, and everything else was fine, but my blood pressure was obviously elevated. I said, well, you know, I did just get hit by a train. And they said, well, yeah, that's still, that's higher than it should be. So I made an appointment and went to the doctor, and, and uh, it was still high. Uh, it was over 200. And um, I, I forget exactly what it was, but it was still really high. And they put me on blood pressure meds. So all of that to say, I take blood pressure medication, and now I'm actually getting a blood pressure cuff so that I can monitor it and check it. Um, and uh, my hope is that you know now that I'm out here living stress-free and eating, arguably eating better, um, that maybe my blood pressure has gone down. So I've gotten a cuff to monitor that and, and with the hope of maybe someday stopping. Take, I hate taking medication. I hate being tied to a pill that I have to take in order to be healthy, to live. It just it bothers me. So if I could be off of blood pressure medication, that would be a happy day for me. So a couple of segues. You know, if anybody can make a video longer, by golly, it's me. I can do that. Okay, I'm going to shift gears here a little bit. Um, uh, I'm going to say probably a couple months ago. Well, I'll go back even further than that. Um, several, a couple years back, I um, had a follower, um, you know, always commented on the videos and stuff like that. Um, good guy. Uh, I, you know, subscribed to his channel and would watch his stuff and everything and uh, actually met him uh, at, it was at, it wasn't the van build, it was uh, RTR, Bob's RTR, January of 2019. No, yes, January of 2019. And uh, Scott comes walking up to me, hey man, how you doing? And you know, people look different than they do in their videos. I am, I am far more attractive looking in person <laughs> my videos and um, that's a lie that's a damn lie um, but uh, I didn't recognize it because he didn't look the same in person he says hi it's Scott no man plan oh Scott how are you man how you doing so anyway I got to know Scott and we became friends and corresponded you know through YouTube uh, and um, he uh, he texted me one day and he says uh Hey man, um, are you uh, are you still in court? I, I said yeah. He goes, do you have like a mail service or anything here? I said well yeah. Okay. He said well what's your address? I said well that's you know blah blah blah. And I, I gave him my address, and he says okay, um, thanks. I'm gonna send you a care package. I said you don't need to do that. He goes yeah I'm gonna do it anyway. So he sent me a refrigerator. He sent, he sent me an Apple Cool uh, 53 quart um, refrigerator. It's got like a $400 refrigerator. 
that's, that's not a care package. But, I, you know, <laughs> thanks, man. Uh, but I'd already, I had already bought the one that I have here. I already bought mine. But there was a gal out in the desert uh, living in a in a uh, teardrop that didn't have refrigeration. And so I said, Scott, you know, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. But um, there's a gal here living in the desert. I've already got one. So is it if I give this refrigerator to this gal that's living out in the desert? Here? No, man, that's great. I'm, you know, just as long as somebody gets it, you know, it's good. So anyway, um, I gave that refrigerator to the gal out here and and uh, and all of that. I mean, there've been some other changes and stuff, but and then I, I got um, I got a call from Scott. I want to say maybe two months ago. Might have been longer than that. And uh, he'd been diagnosed with uh, stage four skin cancer. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, what are you doing here? That kind of news. You know, you have these people that you develop friendships with and learn to care about and all of that and you hear news like that and, you know I was shocked and and um, you know tried to be as supportive as I could in my own silly ineffective ineffective way and um, and all that and so anyway we kind of kept contact periodically over the course of that and he was going into uh, treatment um, you know to fight it and everything and you know I encouraged him in that regard and all that stuff but, um, I found out um, uh, let's see, when was it? I texted him. I said, hey man, I haven't heard from you in a while. Just wanted to check in and see how you're doing. And I didn't hear back. And then I, I went to his um, Facebook page. Scott Moore is his Facebook page. Um, Nomad Plan is his YouTube channel. You guys, are, some of you probably know who he is. But um, I saw on his, um, on his Facebook page, somebody had posted that uh, Scott Moore had passed away. So, safe travels, my friend. You'll be missed. <clears throat> so now if I can quit sobbing here for a second. Um, so, on a happy note. Um... um I, um, I have a friend who um, who sells fountain pens. <laughs> who knew? There's actually quite a market out. Some of them are pretty expensive, like around twenty thousand dollars or more. And um, um, so anyway, I um, I got a pen, a fountain pen, a genuine fountain pen, ultra fine tip, but it emulates. Um, the, almost the fineness of a crow quill. So any of you who are artists and have ever done pen and ink and, and used, um, you know, well type pens, calligraphy, that kind of thing, um, you know about uh, crow quills. And so I've started doing some drawings with this pen and pen and ink. I haven't done pen and ink for a really long time, 70s, probably the last time. I was in high school. Last time I did any kind of pen and ink, I, you know, I switched to graphite. Some of that you've seen, and um, so I've done a series of um, of pictures in pen and ink, and um, I'm going to show those to you. I think I think I've got photographs. <clears throat> if I don't, I will, and um, I'm going to post those on here at the, uh, the traditional end of video slideshow at the, <laughs> at the at the endlessly long end of the endlessly long video. Can you have an end if you're endlessly long? I don't know. So anyway, some new drawings in pen and ink that I'm going to show you here. And I got some pictures. Uh, I mean, I haven't done, done a whole lot of photography. I've been kind of focusing on the drawings a little bit and uh, trying to get out some new stuff. And I've kind of found some inspiration. There's a guy out there I've been watching. Uh, Jono Dry, is that his name? Last name is Dry. Sounds, I think he's German, maybe? Sounds European. What a talented guy. Man, some of the drawings he does are just unbelievably fantastic. He, photorealist. In fact, he works from photographs. Um, but just a, 
excellent drawings. But anyway, I found some inspiration in his work, and, and um, I'm nowhere near as good. But I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to integrate some of the stuff that I got out of watching him draw into, into my drawings. And so look for some things there going forward. Future plans, goals, update, all that good stuff. Okay, so I'm, like I said, I'm still here in La Posa South. And I'm going to stay until uh, it gets too hot, or until my shipments arrive, and then probably leave after that. So I'm, I'm going to say probably next week. It's it's going to be in the hundreds here probably by the weekend. It's Tuesday today, 21st. And um, I think by Saturday they're talking about like 98, 99s, a um, little further west towards Ehrenberg, 101. So it's, you know, summer is here. It's going to get uncomfortably warm. I can handle about 90. After that, I start to get pretty uncomfortable. So, I'm going to make a beeline for Sholo. Sholo, Arizona, and uh, camp somewhere around there. St. John, Snowflake, Sholo, that area. Um, Jimmy Rance, I don't know if you're still out there, man, but um, you gave me a place to go in Sholo, and I'm going to check that out. And, um, uh, and I'm going to look at property. I found... Um, I found some parcels up there that uh, that I like. Sorry, my eye itches. Uh, I found some parcels up there that I like that are, you know, they're good size and affordable. And, you know, the things about them are, are, uh, are to my liking. What I don't like about it is it's distance from, you know, my kids and, um, and my family up north. But, man, it's sure a beautiful piece of land. So I'm going to go look at it. And then um, after Sholo, probably going to head towards... Um, Southern Colorado, uh, the uh, Alamosa area, probably camp below Blanca Peak again. Um, those of you who've been following the channel have probably seen some stuff from Blanca Peak. And oh my goodness, during a thunderstorm season, the stuff that comes over that peak. I mean, there's there's one photograph that I have somewhere. I'll see if I can find it. Maybe I'll try and include it in this video where it looks like uh, Blanca Peak just exploded. It looked like a Mount St. Helens eruption. This thunderstorm coming over the top. Beautiful area. Another place that I want to look at land, so I'm going to check that area out. Uh, some shortfalls there is that, um, you know, they're very highly restrictive about um, how you can use the land. For instance, I can't park my trailer on the land. Can't do that. I think they'll allow you to camp on your own land for a maximum of 14 days in, um, in a, a one-year period. Some places it's a 90-day period, but short of it is you can't just park on your land and camp there. Which I think is wrong. I think here in America, if you own land, as long as you're not doing something that, other than aesthetically, perhaps, affects somebody else. So if you're doing something that's unsanitary, like dumping sewage on the ground or piling uh, garbage and trash on your property and not disposing of it properly, those kinds of things, that's a problem. And we need to have our laws based on that and not say, well, you can't camp on your land. Because we should be allowed to camp on our land shouldn't be allowed to dump sewage. Make that the target, not using your own land in a safe way. And parking a trailer on your land, if you're clean about it, it's no different. Maybe, in my humble opinion, even better than a house. I mean, I use so little resources. I, you know, make, I, I hoard water. I mean, I little trickle and get something wet to wash my dishes. Um, you know, I have very little trash. Um, uh, so anyway, I think that <clears throat> that uh, we should be able to do whatever we want on our own land as long as it's not going to harm somebody else. And I'm not talking about harming them aesthetically because they don't like the fact that you have a trailer on your land. Oh, that's so. Oh, that's so ugly. I can't have that. Sorry. Was I was I being petty? I probably was. Um. So anyway, that's a detractor in the area that I'm looking at. Um, can't, camp on your own, can't camp on your own land indefinitely. Some of it, not at all, some of it limited. Nevada, nowhere. The entire state of Nevada, you cannot camp on your own land. That's what I've read. If somebody knows different than that, please let me know in the comments below because I'd really like to know where I can go and there are no building restrictions. Uh, I know that it's probably rare, but I, I, it is out there. So, uh, and then after Blanca, uh, I'm probably going to head a little further north, maybe camp up in Pawnee National Grasslands again, so I can be close to my, 
my uh, kids and um, and my new grandson and uh, see them. And then after that, um, up to Idaho. Going to be in Bumblebee again. A um, little later this year. Hopefully I can find a camp spot because it's been tough. Um, and um, stay up there until uh, probably second week in August up north in Idaho. And then turn around and head south again. I think I'm going to try and come down... Um, Come across uh, Washington. I want to see. I've got family in uh, Port Angeles that I want to see. Um, Bill and Hillary, <laughs> not the Clintons, but, I, but they're my they're my cousins. So if you guys are out there watching, I'm hoping to stop by and see you guys, like maybe August sometime. And then um, I'm gonna make a hard left turn and head south through uh, Oregon. I'm gonna try to hug the coast as much as I can, um, just because it's beautiful. And um, I want to see some friends uh, in Oregon. I've got uh, an old school buddy that I grew up with that lives near Coos Bay that I want to visit. And, uh, and some other friends that we met here in La Posa South. Um, and I um, hope to stop and, and uh, see them for a couple of days before we continue our trek southward. And then um, we'll end up back here in, in La Posa South again. So, okay. Let's see, is there anything else that I can interject? I think I've covered everything. Uh, slideshow to follow, I'm gonna have to go through and dig those out. Uh, bandwidth, oh, it's so much better. My goodness, I was downloading updates on my phone and was getting three megabits per second. I haven't seen that for months. It's been like two or 300 kilobytes per second here. It's been really bad, but um, finally it's, you know, people have left. There's a handful of folks here. In Quartzite, it's a it's a excuse me, it's a ghost town. It's really empty, and um, and uh, bandwidth is back. So um, I'm going to spend some time editing this together, and um, and putting a slideshow together, and then um, I'll try and get it posted either today or tomorrow. And I think I think that's it. As usual, questions, comments, <laughs> um, four, count them, four, 12 minute segments. Um, so in closing, um, um, you know, there are some folks out there that have been thinking about this process and, you know, there's a lot of information out there um, from people who've been doing it for a long time and some people who just get out here and, and, um, and a lot of them put up YouTube channels or some other social media outlet to talk about their travels and stuff. And, you know, I'm no different. I've kind of done the same thing, I guess. Um, I know, I know in my knower that this is the way I was meant to live. I just, I mean, it's something that I've thought about from a very early age. I mean, I remember as a kid, six, seven, eight, nine years old, maybe, and drawing uh, I think I was drawing um, boats <laughs> and I was, uh, you know, building little compartments to store all of my food and the sorts of, and making lists of the things that I would need in order to survive on my boat and be able to travel anywhere that I wanted to go. So um, I know that I was meant to live this way. I, I love living this way. And I'm getting back to my creative uh, side that I've missed for a very long time um, it just hasn't been practical you know you get a family and kids and all that stuff you gotta you know you gotta kind of shift your life a little bit to accommodate those needs and <clears throat> and now my kids are growing and self-sufficient and and uh, and now I, I have a lifestyle and the time that I can repurpose towards uh, you know my drawing and photography again which is which is good and so I was meant for this, but not everybody is. And there are, I think there are people out there that, <clears throat> that paint a rosy picture of this lifestyle. And I got to tell you, <clears throat> um, it's a great lifestyle. And I think that, I think it's a better lifestyle. I, I use less resources. Um, I have a backyard that's 25,000 miles around. 
left and right, up and down, longitude and latitude. I got a big backyard. I can go anywhere in it. Anywhere I want. Um, I haven't plugged into an electrical circuit since March of 2018. I haven't used a generator. All of my electrical needs have been supplied by solar. Um, I now that I have refrigeration, I um, you know I buy fresh fruits and vegetables and keep them, and I think I eat much better than I normally would. I've certainly reduced my uh, caloric intake. I've lost weight, a lot of weight. Um, I was probably pushing about uh, 280 at one point. I'm down to around 190 at this point. So almost 100 pounds. And, uh, you know, a lot of it I lost early on and going through the stress of the life change and selling the house and the, you know, the breakup of a relationship and all of that good stuff. But, um, you know, I'm keeping the weight off and, um, you know, I, I go for walks and hikes and um, so anyway, all of that to say, I think this is a much better way to live for me. I think it might be a much better way to live for a lot of people, maybe even most people with some conditioning and some and some breakdown of expectations and stuff because you don't have just a switch you can turn on anymore and have instant electricity you can't just walk into the kitchen and flip a lever and get water out of a, out of a pipe um, you have to be you know a lot more thoughtful about what you do and how you live <clears throat> but i think in terms of its benefit to the planet you know um this is so, so much more frugal way to live. And there are people around the world that live even more simply than this. Um, but it's not for everyone. And um, I think there's a lot of stuff out there that says everybody should do this. I'm not one of those folks. I don't think everybody should do this. Um, but if you have questions and you'd like to know more, I mean, I try to be forthcoming in my videos and stuff and, you know, share, share what I can. Uh, and I, you know, I try to be honest about, you know, what it's like and and uh, and all of those things. But I've, I'm sure there's got to be questions, so ask them. And uh, if I know the answer, I'll be happy to give it to you, um, or I'll, you know, point you in a direction where uh, you'll probably be able to find it. There's a bunch of resources out there. So anyway, <laughs> way off on another tangent. So anyway, um, what else is out there? Screen doors working great. Love my windows. Growing some basil and some mint. I think I've got a video of some, the mint that I'm growing out there. I don't know what I'm going to do with those. You know, when I travel, you know, you go through. I guess California is the only one that really does that. So maybe I won't need to worry about it. But I was, I was kind of concerned about bringing plants with me. Like, you know, people would say, sorry, you can't bring plants into our state. <laughs> okay, so that's the first time I've done that. Uh, fill the chip. <laughs> So four, uh, four 12 minute, se well, four segments. I don't know if they're all 12. Um, and I filled the chip. I think that's, that's gotta be a first. So this is really gonna be a long video, but um, uh, hopefully there's something in there worth, worth looking at. And you know, it's been a long time since I've had an update. So there's a lot to share with you. Um, <clears throat> so, okay, a uh, slideshow to follow. Um, so I just wanted to close here. I'm downloading some phone pictures on my um, laptop as we speak uh, that I'll um, weave into um, the slideshow at the end. Uh, there'll be some food stuff, some some uh, scenery shots, and and uh, you know whatever else I find in there. And um, and uh, I'll get this posted here in the next few days, and and then I'll try and do another one once I get relocated in Sholo here in a few weeks. So hopefully it won't be quite so long between uh, video segments. But um, anyway, I was going to apologize, and I just said nah, because I'm re I'm not really sorry. I mean I've I've been living life, man, and enjoying it, and um, doesn't mean that I you know I, I I don't care about you guys. I do. I mean, you know this has mostly been about. You know, me leaving a chronicle of, of my life here and the transition and uh, the build. And, you know, there's a lot of elements that if you go from the beginning and watch through, there's there's a lot that's been recorded here in the last two years. I'm about to enter my third year, May 11th. May 11th will be my 
uh, second anniversary, so I'll be entering my third year on the road. Is that awesome or what? Doesn't seem like it's been that long. It's been a good couple of years. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, this has been a chronicle, mostly about me chronicling, keeping a record for my benefit, for my family, so that I can, you know, kind of keep in touch with them and show them, you know, that I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay, guys. <laughs> really, I am. And uh, I'm enjoying life. And, um, you know, there are some things that I wish were a little bit different, but, you know, they are what they are. And, you know, the, at, at the end of the day, the bottom line is in black ink. Very deep black ink. So, it's all good. So, um, so I'm not going to apologize for the distance in between videos. I'm making up for it because I think I'm probably going to have an hour-long video here by the time I'm done. And um, some of you will watch it, some of you won't. It won't matter. If you watch anything, probably watch the slideshow at the end. Of course, I'm telling you at the end, so it doesn't really do you any good, does it? Oh, well. Love you guys. Bless you guys. And, um, uh, you know, until next time.